Shopping is a pleasure at Publix, and that's the way founder George Jenkins intended it to be. Jenkins grew up in Georgia, working in his father's general store, learning about the importance of customer service. But Jenkins didn't want to run the store, so he set off for Georgia Tech in hopes of becoming an engineer. And while he never earned the actual degree for it, Jenkins engineered one of the biggest and quite frankly, best grocery store chains in the United States. Jenkins worked odd jobs to pay for college, including a stint in real estate. Hearing about the great Florida land boom of the 1920s, Jenkins headed to Florida, hoping to make some fast cash in real estate. In Tampa, Jenkins met the owner of the Piggly Wiggly there, who offered him a job. Jenkins accepted. Within three months, he was managing the store. This Piggly Wiggly was a bit more on the cutting edge of things than the store Jenkins grew up in. Customers shopped for themselves, instead of handing over a list to the clerk to shop for you. Jenkins' engineer brain got spinning, and he generated lots of ideas for how to improve the store. The owner, however, would not even listen to Jenkins' ideas, so Jenkins quit. Mind you, this was 1930, during the first year of the Great Depression, and he opened his own grocery store right next door to the Piggly Wiggly. Jenkins' store was called Publix Food Store, and right from the start, he built his store on the principles of cleanliness, customer service, and quality product. There was some healthy competition with the store next door, one upping each other with sales and promotions. Jenkins and his Publix food store thrived. The Piggly Wiggly, well, it closed. Within five years, Jenkins opened another store across town. But Jenkins' dreams were of something even bigger he sold off an orange grove he'd purchased years before and built the first public supermarket there on November 8th, 1940 in Winterhaven, Florida. It was cutting edge and innovative. It was called the Food Palace. It was the first supermarket to have automatic sliding glass doors and air conditioning it had piped-in music, fluorescent lighting, cold cases for frozen and refrigerated items, a flower section, and a donut shop. It was designed in an Art Deco style with marble, glass, and stucco, along with terrazzo floors. The first slogan at Publix was Florida's finest food store. Jenkins took the name Publix from a chain of movie houses going out of business called Publix Theaters. And he chose green for the color branding simply because A&P had used red. Publix's main supplier, Lakeland Grocery Company, went up for sale in 1945 and he bought it. He acquired their 19 grocery stores as well as their warehouse. He remodeled and rebranded them all as Publix's. The 1950s brought tremendous growth for Publix. They moved their headquarters to Lakeland, Florida and built their first distribution center there. They began to produce their own branded food. They opened their first in-house bakery. In 1954, the new motto, where shopping is a pleasure, was introduced. Publix was the dominant grocery store chain by 1959 in Central Florida. In the 1960s, Publix expanded to South Florida, acquiring more stores from Grand Union and building another distribution center in Miami. They also added a full-service deli.
In the early 1970s, sales exceeded $500 million. When Publix expanded to Northern Florida in 1974, their sales hit $1 billion. Always the innovator, Publix added its first Presto ATMs in 1982. Publix had ATMs before many banks even did. Publix ventured out of state in 1991, opening stores in Savannah, Georgia. Other states followed, including South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, Virginia, Tennessee, and soon to be in Kentucky. Jenkins established profit sharing and employee ownership early on in his stores. Publix has grown from a single store to the largest employee-owned grocery store in the United States. It's often listed as one of the best big companies to work for in Fortune magazine, including the top spot in 2019. Today, Publix is still known for its clean stores, friendly staff, and quality inventory. The famous scale is still at the entrance, a free service Jenkins started in his first store because bathroom scales weren't common and other merchants charged for usage. Unfortunately, public scales may become a thing of the past in the not too distant future. They're no longer being built, so Publix currently plans to service the ones they have but will not be adding them to newly developed locations. There is a cult-like following for the pub sub, the sub sandwiches that are made to order at the deli counter. The same can be said for the fried chicken tenders and some of their specialty cakes, especially the raspberry elegance one. And all the kids and parents know that the bakery passes out free cookies if you ask for one. Often taking vacationers from the north by surprise, a Publix associate will personally walk with a customer to find an item and always offer to wheel their cart to their car and unload the items. At Publix, shopping really is a pleasure. Thanks for watching Memory Mountain. If you enjoyed this video, please click to subscribe to our channel and hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to tap the notification bell so you'll be one of the first to know when we post our next story looking back over the landscape of Americana.